Okay, I'm back again for my third video. Hopefully this video is better than the last one because the second one was better than the first one. Maybe this will be a little better than the last one. Not really staying in any certain order right now while I'm getting used to YouTube videos. But I was going to show you a little trick about a sequence timer that I'm not to do. There might be other ways to do it. I just don't know how to do it. If somebody knows the easier way, please show me. I like to learn easier ways to do things too, but this is how I do it. This is for like if you have a series of steps that you want to happen in a certain order at a certain time apart is what I use this for. Like I'm designing a, a stacker at work right now and I, want, I have a couple of arms that I want to come down and go up and in, in a sequence at a certain time interval. And that's what this would be used for. And we'll kind of go through it and test it and everything as we're going. I'll show you, you know, in case there's a mistake, this, I'll show you how to fix all that. Anyways, what I would start with would be like an operator input button to initiate and to initiate this sequence. So I'll try to do this with the drop down menus and stuff. I, I'm bad about using a lot of um, keyboard strokes because that's what I normally do. So if you see me, if you see something appear without me doing that, it's because I did a keyboard stroke and I didn't just uh, pick it from the toolbox over here, like. Once you get used to doing this, so you'll use a lot of keyboard strokes. I find myself doing it, and I do a lot more and more keyboard strokes. And if you're ever wondering which one to use, like the keyboard stroke to open this is an A. Keyboard stroke to open a normal close is B. And out, output, the keyboard stroke is O-U-T. They're all listed next to them, so your most used instructions, that's the ones I know the keyboard strokes for that I use a lot. But I did that by pulling it from this toolbox palette right here. And that's that's a good beginning way to do it until you learn your keyboard strokes. Anyways, let's get on with it. This is a, this is normally open input. This is going to be for my momentary push button. I double clicked on it to bring up the, this dialog box and lets me enter the address in it. Okay. Now, if I want to enter the address in here, I can just enter I zero and hit enter. It's not going to tell me much there. A good thing to do is to always put in comments. And I'll show you what I like doing to comments. Uh, this, I'm just going to call this a operator button. All right, see, now it's put, this is what this is. It tells me what it is. I put a comment over here. And you can do it also by putting it in here. I usually try to build my devices first and I build my program from that. This one I'm kind of doing it ass backwards, I guess, but I'll show you how to do it anyways. So the operator pushes this button. This is how you think to do a program. You also, you think in the line of what you're doing. Okay, operator pushes the button. The next step, I want it to start a sequence. So I'm gonna come, I uh, almost did it. Take a look toolbox. I'm gonna grab a set. All right, that is an output. That's a set output. That's an output that stays on. When this momentary button is pushed and released, this will remain on. All right, I'm going to call that one M0. And we'll, we'll call it like a... Start count. What was it? Yeah, let's call it count. Okay, now let's see if I go over here. Tag editor. And I go to memory bits. I save first. Once I save, uh oh, I don't know why I didn't pull up there, but should have. That might be a glitch with IDEC or something. Yeah, I'm still not there. Let's see. Let me do it this way. I delete that out. Still there. All right, now let me go into comments. Let's go over here and put a count. All right, now see it puts it over there. I don't know why it's not dish. It's supposed to put it in from here also, but maybe there's a glitch somehow in this software. Anyways, now basically when this comes on, this is a complete instruction, believe it or not. So we go to simulate the little green telephone screen. I can click that, click it back off like it was a momentary push button. See, that sets to on. It's staying on. Don't matter if I push this again or not. It's going to stay on. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this. And I'm back. You can't edit 
you cannot edit and simulate, so you have to come back out of simulate to edit. So now I'm going to put an instruction here, and I'm going to go M0, oop, not M O M zero. Okay, this is going to. I'm making my counter sequence right now is what I'm doing. So when this button's pushed momentarily, this is going to come on. It's going to make this set and be on all the time. I'm going to put another one. I try to keep doing a toolbox, but I forget sometimes. All right. Double click this one. This is a, a half second counter is what this is. I'm fixing to put in. It's 8121. All right. Oh, I got to put the M in front of it. Everybody makes mistakes. One second clock is what that does. It counts half second up, half second down. So it's a one second clock. All right. So now once this is on, and this is on, and this is counting, it's going to output over here. So now I'm going to put me an output, that keyboard stroke, that's what I just did. So M1. All right, and this is going to be my, we're going to call it pulse. We'll call it count pulse. Okay, so that's my count pulse. Now let's see what this does. Simulate. See that blinking? Link in one second, blip, blip, blip. And this is an AND instruction. So this is not gonna count because this AND this has to be working. That is not on. Operator pushes the button, sets this to on, and that's on, now that's blinking. Okay, you understand that? Now, turn that back off because I'm in, in a simulate. I can turn it off by double clicking it. See, not counting. Counting. Okay, come back out of simulate. <clears throat> okay, so this is my count pulse. Now I'm going to count it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put another normally open. Here I'll do it in the toolbox. That's going to be M1. Okay, and right here I'm going to put a counter. That's an adding counter. I didn't grab it from over here. You could have went to counters right here. CNT, adding counter. Okay, this is going to be counter zero. Type that in right there. I'm going to go ahead and preset it for 20 seconds. Okay, this is going to be my pulse counter. Okay. That's in the wrong place. That's the reset. See, that's a mistake I just made. I'm going to show you cut. Paste. That's reset. This is pulse. I want this pulse to be counted right here. Okay, when that pulse is counted, and it gets to 20, I want it to turn something else on. So, I'm going to put right here, we'll put an output, and I'm going to make that a... Um, Right now, let's make an M2. Let's just show you what it does. All right. Reset. This is where I reset. So when M2 comes on, if I reset here, it's going to turn it right back off. All right. So you're not going to see it, but this is actually the way you want to do it. So I'm going to make this a different reset number. That way you can see it actually come on from now. We're going to call it M3. <clears throat> Okay, let's save that. We'll go back into simulate now. Okay, now watch the counter work. Turn it off, it's setting on. Okay, it blip, 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 blip. I should have made it 10 seconds where it would have taken so long, but <clears throat> anyway, you'll get the idea. See, so it sets to on. Okay, turn this off so we'll quit counting. And now this right here, if that was hooked up, it would reset it. Okay, see how that works? Okay, <clears throat> so let's make this reset now. We're going to make it reset off of itself, too. Okay. And I'm going to make this bit reset also. So when he hits this button and this gets through counting, I want that to reset also. So I'm going to put me another... Uh, 
reset here, RST. I'm going to call it M0. Okay, grab a pencil, draw a line here. Let's see how this works. Okay. Operator pushes the button, let's go of it. Starts counting. I should have changed my seconds again. Oh well. Everything works right. This should count up to 20. Turn this on just for a second. And you're not probably not going to see it. Then this is going to reset and turn that off. See, you didn't see that actually come on, but it did. Basically, what I did is I made this reset the clock from when the operator pushes the button. This is to initiate a stacking sequence with us. He pushes this button. It's going to make some arms come up, grab the material. Some other arms retract and drop it onto those. And those arms are going to go down, and then the top arms are going to come back out. That's what we're trying to build. But hopefully, you're understanding how this works. This is the basic timer portion of it, okay? So I'm going to go to edit run comment. Let's make a fancy little run comment up here. That way, I'll remember what this is for. Make it look nice. Put some. I learned this in the IDIC class. This is going to be my uh, sequence counter. Okay. See, it puts my rung comment right up there. This is what this rung is for. All right. Now. I'm going to make it turn some stuff on. <clears throat> so now I want to do what's called a counter compare. Toolbox. Counter comparison output. CC. Okay. So I want to put a CC right there. That CC. Double click it. I want it to count counter zero. I want it when counter zero gets to two. I want to turn something on. Okay, so now I'm going to go in out. And we'll have we do this like reset, set, reset. I like sets and resets. So set. Okay, this is going to be Q0. This is going to be my first output. This is going to be for one of my solenoids. <clears throat> we'll go over here and name it. We're going to call this solenoid one. Okay. Okay, so when this gets to two, it's going to turn this on. Simulate it. I'll show you how it works. See that come on? I might have did it too fast for you, but let's see. Let me, let me turn that up to a different number, make it a little easier to see. We'll make it four. Okay. <clears throat> let's try it again. I'm going to let it time out so it'll reset. <clears throat> okay. Hits the button. Okay, when that gets to four, this should turn on. See? Simple as that. Okay, now, this is my first solenoid. I want my second solenoid to come up and retract. It's gonna, this one's going to actually retract. So I'm going to put another counter comparison. Okay, I want I want this to do it one second after that first one. So it's gonna be same counter I'm looking at. It's looking at counter C zero, C zero. I want it this to operate at we'll say five seconds. Okay, this is gonna set output Q one. Okay, Q one is gonna tag editor. Q one is gonna be. In the real world, you would put the name of your device that's actually actuating on there. Like if it was a retract arm or a raise arm or whatever you were doing, that helps you remember what you're programming and why you're doing it that way. Okay, so four seconds into this timer, this arm goes up. Four seconds, five seconds into that timer, this arm retracts. All right, when that arm retracts, now I want this arm to go back down. So I'm going to put me another CC instruction in here. Same thing, C0. All right, I got four seconds, five seconds. I want this to do this in one second increment, so I'm going to do six. 
Okay, and now I'm going to do a reset. And I'm going to reset Q0. Okay, so arm goes up, arm retracts, arm goes down, and I want this arm to come back out. So my next one is going to be another counter comparison. See, zero, same counter, I'm looking at the same counter. I'm using this counter for all of my timing of this, this little sequence right here is what I'm doing actually. I want it seven seconds. Okay, then I'm going to do another reset. This is going to be for Q1. <clears throat> Let's kick this down here. So when you get your sequence down, you can always drop the time on this too down to something a little more workable. Like I want, let's make it 10 seconds. If you don't need that much time, you can drop that down. Uh, let's go and see if we can see this whole sequence work here. I'm gonna, I'll. Let me start this over. Okay. Now we're setting to zero. Operator hadn't touched anything yet. Okay. Operator hits the button, releases the button. Timer starts counting. Bam. See how they went on and off? Here, let's do this another way too. If you're in here, <clears throat> in um, this, the um, simulate, if you're in simulate, you can also go here and go online, go to batch view, and I do it this way a lot too. I'll pull, if it looks funny, this check mark, if it looks like that, you can go like that and put your comments out here. I'm going to grab another batch view, and I'm going to pull up my outputs now. These are my outputs. Put them right next to each other. And again, if it looks like this for some reason, it's got all of your, your, your entire word in here. You just click that, and it'll put it in the comments. It gives you the actual current value of the state that it's in. Okay. So watch these solenoids now, how they come on and on. It's going to turn one, one, zero, zero. So I'm changing that one to one. And I'm turning it back off. One, one, zero, zero. Now that works. I'm going to start it again. One, one, zero, zero. That's just another way you can monitor, and that's also, you can use those also when you're in monitor, not simulation. If you want to see inputs and outputs on a list going off and on inside of your PLC, if you're doing diagnostics or something. Now that's the end of this one. Um, I might start putting, maybe I'll put a copy of this down in the comments for people that want to download it and look at it. You know, and I could put your own comment down here like you did up there it would be a wise thing to do if you were actually writing a program maybe put sequence or something and sequence counter and you know lift sequence or something but I'll, I'll put these I'll uh, save this program and I will put it down into the comments if I can figure out how and that way for those of you that do download the program from iDeck you can get this and actually play with it and see how it works and that is it until next Saturday